Hello, welcome back to Ask a Monk. Uh, today I thought I would try to answer at least one of the questions that are waiting for me. And uh, the question I'm thinking of now is uh, on euthanasia. It was asked, uh, what is the uh, Buddhist stance on uh, killing someone who wants to die or who um, would perhaps be freed from suffering through their own death? Uh, now I hope I hope it's quite clear that I don't think it should be clear from what I've said before that I don't think they would be freed from suffering through their own death. I think that's something that uh, I'm not. I don't have to get into. Uh, is my views on that are pretty clear. I mean, only through giving up clinging are you free from suffering, and that's really a, a key here. That uh, the view and the belief that uh, killing someone could somehow be better for them is, uh, is delusionary, delusional um, because it's, it's something that they are clinging to and it's an aversion that they have towards the suffering and to indulge that is by no means of any benefit to them. Uh, anytime we look at a, a being who's suffering greatly and we think that by putting them out of their misery or somehow doing them a favor is, is quite mistaken. Um, when, when in fact some of the greatest insights and wisdom and, and realizations, the wake up uh, enlightenment that comes from suffering, that comes from bearing with your suffering uh, and learning to overcome the clinging and the, the, the aversion that we have towards it, uh, that's where the real benefit is. So countless stories. If you talk to people who work with dying patients in hospice care or so on, they will tell you about the the moment of clarity that comes to a person who's suffering greatly. That right before they die, not everyone, but many people will have this moment where suddenly they're free, and it's so clear that they've they've gone through something and they've worked through something and they've worked it out, and they're finally at peace with themselves and there's clarity of mind and they're able to move on. When you kill, when you cut that off, well, first of all, this is, if, especially if it's their wish that they should die, then you're helping them escape from the lesson. You're helping them to run away uh, from, from this, you know, temporarily, from this, uh, this lesson that they have to help them to overcome the clinging, helping them to encourage their clinging to, their, their aversion to, pain and suffering. Uh, that's the one side, but I think more important is to talk about the effect of killing on one's own mind, because that's what makes, as I've said before, an action immoral or moral. Uh, it's the effect that it has on your own mind. It's not really the suffering that it brings to the other person. The most horrible thing about killing someone else is the disrupt disruptive nature of killing. When you kill something that wants to live, it's, of course, a lot more disruptive than when you kill someone that wants to die. Uh, but nonetheless, it's an incredibly disruptive act. It's a very powerful and important act. For people who have never killed before, uh, for people who have never killed before, it's very hard to, see, hard to understand this. I think they will generally have a, a natural aversion to it because of the weight of the act. So many people have never killed even insects and so on. And, and really feel uh, uh, abhorrent to, to do such a thing just by nature and that's because of the strength of the act uh, but but it may be difficult for them to understand um, because they've never experienced on the other hand for someone who kills often a person who murders animals and uh, you know, slaughters animals or uh, you know, insects and so on it's equally difficult for them to see because they've, they've become uh, desensitized to it uh, I had I, I've told the story before about when I was younger I would I would do hunting I, I thought to do hunting with my father to hunt with my father and hunt deer and I killed one deer and uh, it was really a, a very difficult thing to do it was it, it surprised me because I had no qualms about it I didn't think there was anything wrong with killing at the time I thought you know that's a good way to get food uh, but when it Took, when it came time to actually kill the deer, my, my whole body was shaking. And it surprised me at the time. I, I didn't understand what was going on, what was happening. But of course, later on when I practiced meditation and, and, and really 
woke, woke up and, 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 and had this great wake-up call as to what I was doing to my mind and that, so many things that I had to go through and had to work through and all of these emotions that came up that I had to sort out and, and realize and give up and, and just changing my whole outlook until finally there was this great transformation. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm not <laughs> talk about great things that happened to me, but you know, when you go through meditation, and I was in a pretty bad state, you know, all of, there's a lot of cleaning that goes on, even just in the first few days. Uh, and, you know, so uh, uh, made me realize that, you know, helped me to realize that, oh, yes, that's, that's what was going on there. There was this, uh, there really is a great weight to killing. And um, I think that's quite clear when you, when you, when you fine-tune your mind, mind. When you start to practice meditation, you, you're, your mind becomes very quiet, you know, relatively speaking, and you're able to see that any little thing that comes up, you're able to see it much better than before, whereas when your mind is very active, uh, when you're, you're, you're full of defilement and greed and anger and so on, you can't really make head or tail of anything. So it's, it's really difficult for most people to come up with any solid theory of reality or solid understanding of reality when you talk about these things. It, it kind of sounds interesting, but it's really hard for them to understand because they've never taken the time to quiet their mind and to, to see things clearly, you know, one by one by one, and, and, and to be able to break things apart. Uh, but it's like you have a very fine-tuned instrument and you're able to see these things that people aren't able to see. And so killing becomes very abhorrent and, and there's, you're able to see how even the slightest anger has uh, a great power to it, let, al let alone like the, the disruptive power. When you say something to someone and it changes their life and it disrupts their course, um, it has great, there, there's great power in it. Uh, but to kill has a, a far greater power. It's, uh, it's on, a, on a whole other level. Even when you kill someone who wants to die, you're changing their karma. You're, 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 um, it's like, like trying to help someone who's running from the law. For instance, someone who robbed a bank, you, you help to hide them. It's a lot of work. And uh, that's really what's going on here. When you kill someone who wants to die, it, it's no less, but it's less, but it's still on the level of killing someone who doesn't want to die because it's a great and weighty act to kill and it's something that weighs on your mind. Uh, it's, some, it's, it's a very, you know, there's repercussions because of the power and the, the uh, intensity of the act, of the, the disruption. If you think of the world, the universe as being waves, you know, energy waves, and even physical, of course, is energy. If you think of it as all energy, the, the amount, the explosion of energy that you've, you've created, mental energy, uh, is, is tremendous by killing. If there's someone who's never killed before, it, it may be difficult to see, and this is why people think, well, euthanasia could be a good thing. Now, there's one exception that I've talked about before, and I think it is an exception. I'm not 100% sure, but to me, you could at least argue for it, and that is letting someone die. I think clearly you can, you can and should let people die rather than giving them medication uh, that's only going to prolong their misery or so on. I think that's um, reasonable. Uh, but I think also you could you could stop life support if you if it was um, if it was considered that uh, they, they had no chance or, or maybe even that the mind had left or so on. There was the case actually apparently that's what happened with Mahasi Sayadaw that they said well the mind is no longer working the brain is no longer functioning so they could take him off life support because it was, he was no longer there. Uh, but on the other hand, th this, is, this is where you could be excused, but on the other hand, my, te my teacher in Thailand gave a, an interesting perspective on this that uh, you, know, you can take as you like. But he said, well, you, know, you, you never really know. And you know, we can say that the person is not going to come back, but it's, it's never really clear. There was the case, and he told this story about someone who they thought was going to die, but they kept them on life support for some time, and eventually they recovered and came back and lived another ten years or something, and were able to do all sorts of good deeds. Now his point was, if a person has the opportunity in this life to do good deeds, you shouldn't be so quick to cut them off, because you don't know where they're going. Uh, this, this is why we say always that this, this human life is, is very precious. Now the second story I gave about 
Matakundali, the boy who, who, had, who was on his deathbed and had a chance to see the Buddha. That's just an example of how we can possibly create wholesome mind states before the moment of death, and you never really know. If the person, you know, the person has a chance now as a human being, if their mind is impure, uh, then you know, letting them die or helping them to die is only going to uh, lead them or destine them to an un unpleasant um, result, an unpleasant life in the future. So if you can help them to stay and to at least help them to um, practice meditation or, or listen to the Dhamma or so on, or at least be with their family and, and, and learn about compassion and love and so on and, and cultivate good thoughts and even cultivating patience with the pain which is an excellent uh, learning tool, learning experience. It's something that uh, we should not underestimate and undervalue. Uh, this can be a great thing and it's something that we should actually uh, encourage, something that, that is far better than to dismiss the person and send them on their way not knowing where they're going to go and not just send them on their way but uh, you know, disrupt their life. So, so well, even, even in the case of not killing but letting a person die, uh, it, it can be that helping them to stay on is a good thing. Now you have to judge for yourself. It really depends on the individual. I think I wouldn't want to stay on and if, if it came down to taking medication or so on, I would just let myself go. But you really have to judge for yourself. And for a person who's not meditating, for a person who hasn't um, really begun to practice, it, it, it's, always, you know, it's always dangerous to let them go because you don't know where they're going. If once you can see, I think, I guess the answer would be if once you can see that clearly they're on the right path and they're ready to go, then you can help them, you know, to give up medication or to get off life support or so on, and and say, you know, go on your way and 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 you know, be be reassured that they're going in the right direction. Just be careful um, you know, that that it, they wouldn't be better off sticking around to do more good deeds and practice more meditation because you don't really know where they're going in the future. So I hope that that gave some insight into the Buddhist uh, take on euthanasia. And thanks for tuning in. All the best.